Today on In Grace, on location in Israel. Ever since I was a boy, I've been fascinated with God's creation. I'm traveling the planet to tell His story about His world. I'm Jim Scudder Jr. Come with me on another exciting adventure in grace. Welcome to In Grace, and we are on location in Israel. Dr. Carl Baugh. This is my 18th trip, and I have to admit, this is the most blessed, the most rewarding of all the trips that I've taken. You need to join us. And you know what? Today, we're going to discover hidden Israel. I have seen things. I thought I'd seen all of the basic sites, but I've seen things on this trip that I have not seen before. We're standing on a spot I've never stood on before. This is exciting and gratifying. Well, you're gonna love our In Grace episode today. We have a four-part series coming to you from Israel, and we're going to take you on a journey that is really epic. We're gonna discover things. We're gonna find out a spiritual meaning, and we're also gonna look at archeology span yeah. and creation science. We've got it all covered here on the show. All covered, revealing new discoveries, that are fresh and vital to us, you just have to watch it. Caesarea. Oh, one of the ancient and modern marvels of engineering. The, the whole, really the whole city, uh, the, the harbor, that wasn't a harbor. Oh. For the ancients, uh, 2,000 years ago, to build a deep water harbor, pouring concrete underwater, yes. that's highly technical and it's astounding that they knew how to do it. Of course, the criticism had been made that Pilate didn't exist, that he was a fabrication of course, governing the trial of our Lord Jesus. You know what I tell people, Dr. Baugh, is if, if you can't find something in archeology, span but the Bible says it happened or this person existed, I say, keep digging. Sure, and it'll so, turn up sooner And so or later. they did. It's cool when they uncover something that kind of shuts down the critics of the Bible. And that's exactly what happened here at Caesarea. Yes. Because Pontius Pilate, the Bible referenced, of course, we know him in the story of Christ. He was the governor of this region for Rome and they uncovered a, a plaque with his inscription on it, Pontius Pilate. And it's at the Israel Museum and they have a replica here at Caesarea. And so, Again, the Bible is vindicated. Bible is vindicated again and again, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. So this evidence is the threshold of faith, but it still requires faith. But there's a basis to our faith. And as great as this is, and it's one of the greatest engineering feats of all history, the engineering involved in the gospel, hmm. not only the sacrifice, the death, burial, and resurrection, but the Holy Spirit engineering opportunities for us to hear the gospel. Well, listen to this. The aqueduct brings the water of life yes. to a city. Oh, yes. Okay. We received the gospel from Caesarea and it went into the entire world. The gospel is the living water that you drink one time. They would keep drinking from this water and they would be thirsty the next day. We drink of the gospel 
of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, I am the living water. And that. you never thirst again. So once again, Israel ties it all together and brings it all home. Uh, we're uh, in the vicinity of the Carmel Caves. And of course, Elijah is one of our favorite characters of all history. And Elijah prayed in this vicinity with uh, the prophets of Baal having exhausted all their efforts. It begins like, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel, that I've done all these things according to thy word, and then the fire fell. He had contact with God. That's faith. And just before that, he was really mocking those prophets of Baal. Maybe your God is sleeping. Maybe your God is off at the restroom. Oh, yes. You know, I mean, off on a journey. And they were cutting themselves and crying out, and it didn't work because all of religion is nothing but idols made with hands. Human effort. That's it. Idols made with human hands. Literally. Idol worship is worshiping the self of the individual, and atheism also worships ourselves, the individual. You know, the, the really, the, the school of how we got here, the, the main you know, paradigm in theory is evolution. And yes. a, a backbone of evolution are the transitional human humans. Uh, yes, so, supposed transitional Exactly, humans, yes. so let's talk about Neanderthal. Pastor, we're in the vicinity of Special Cabrera Carmel Caves, particularly number two, where a tremendous discovery was made that settles the issue, yet the evolutionists, of course, uh, continue to hold on to it. And what was found here in the Carmel region blows out of the water this concept of a transitional human because we find something in the skeleton that makes it 100% human. You are precisely correct. Well, let's go check it out. Let's go check it out. Just down here, Dr. Ball, as the Carmel Range begins, we have a pretty famous cave, the Cabrera Cave. Well, the discovery of what was in it in 1982 should have emblazoned headlines around the world, but it didn't. It was just quietly discussed, and only recently has the full impact come out. Why did it get your attention, or what did they find that got your attention? All right. The final evidence, physical evidence, that Neanderthal could perform, could speak as articulately as you and I or anyone else. He could sing opera if he wanted to. He could form diphthongs or the nuances of any cultural dialect because of a hyoid bone. Huh. In the cave back here, cave number two, Cabrera Cave number two, the discovery was made in 1982 of a rather complete Neanderthal skeleton. And uh, it did not have the skull. Other skulls had been found. And uh, the discovery was made when they compared that with human anatomy. Our skulls have, on average, 1,350 cc's of cranial capacity, but Neanderthal had 1,450 cc's of cranial capacity. So based on that, he's no dummy. Uh, he, he's not a dim-witted at he's all. Not, he's not a caveman. More intelligent than we. In fact, he invented the first movies. They found that in a little disc, 72 millimeters across, where on one side of the disc, was etched a deer standing in a meadow. On the other side was etched in perfect symmetry, the same deer with his feet up. So when you take a string and flip it, uh, wow. he's, he's running through the meadow. Well, the first invention of the movies belongs to Neanderthal. The evolutionary community still leaves him as Neanderthal ensis in a progressive bracket. Not so. The earliest man discovered is full man, the earliest actual fossils, just like you and I. Wow. Truth prevails.
you can discover Hidden Israel on DVD for your gift to In Grace. This exciting series features four one-hour episodes as Jim Scudder Jr. and Dr. Carl Baugh travel the land promised to Abraham over 4,000 years ago. If your gift is $35 or more, we will also include a special virtual tour. Support In Grace today to receive this special offer. Just call 800-78-GRACE or visit ingrace.tv for more information. How many times have you been to Israel? This is my 18th trip to Israel, and I'm enjoying it more than uh, any of the others for many reasons. Not the least of which is, you're in charge and I'm just sitting back not having to make the final decisions. Well, now now we've left the group behind, they've gone back to the States, 126, we had a great trip, but now we get to just cruise around wherever we want to go, whenever we want to go, and uh, this is going to be a lot of fun. Pastor, I have been uh, extremely eager to get you to this site. You've never been here before. Correct? I haven't. If I have, it's been a long time. But I know you've been here more recently, and you found out some things that I've never known. Yeah, all right. There are two or three reasons. I'll try to abbreviate those. But here we have the statement in Luke chapter 9, verse 10. And he, the Lord Jesus, took the apostles and withdrew apart to a city called Bethsaida. When the crowds learned it, they followed him and he welcomed them, curing those with need of healing. The miracle of the loaves and fishes occurred in this vicinity. In physics and astrophysics, it has been determined that matter can neither be created nor destroyed. That's the first law of thermodynamics. And it has been determined with the anthropic principle that all physicists and astrophysicists know now to be an absolute case. The universe and everything in it is so fine-tuned, they have found over 800 parameters that all relate to each other, have to be absolute in order for the universe to function. Jesus started with the little boy's lunch. Five little biscuits, loaves, and two fishes. Now the scripture is so specific, it doesn't say two fish, it says two fishes. That means there were two different kinds of fish. Huh. It is that specific. Two of those, five loaves. With that, he then broke the loaves and broke the fishes and multiplied them to the point where he fed all 20,000 people, 5,000 men plus women and children. Every time he broke the biscuit, a little loaf, and made two out of it, he had to change all of the 800 plus parameters of the universe to accommodate the addition of mass and energy. Now, to me, the miracle of just multiplying bread and fish is mind boggling. Now, you just totally blew away any brain power I had left, Dr. Ball. Well, no wonder wow. he said, no wonder he said, yes. woe unto you, Chorazin and Bethsaida. Yes. If the mighty, when Jesus said something's mighty, it's mighty. If the mighty works done in you, Tyre and Sidon, pagan, willfully sinful civilizations would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. At this location, Jesus experienced expanded the dimensions of the universe. It's almost like we're walking in ancient past on these streets here in Bethsaida. Now, while the mortar's been added, this is the layout. We are actually on the streets where sick people were mm -hmm. healed mm -hmm. and changed. And in so doing, here's what thrills me. It's not simply that they're physical illness was abated. Pastor, what thrills me is they believed God's word in Malachi 4.2. 
They believed that the Son of Righteousness would come, so they accepted Him in faith. You know, evidence is one thing, but evidence is just the platform for faith. He that cometh to God must believe that He is, and that He's a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. We're in the Hippodrome at uh, Bethshean, which was Scythopolis at that particular time. Long history was recorded in this spot, and this Hippodrome uh, was designed for a number of reasons. This was not known until after 1952, even though it was known that there was a long civilization history here. In the Roman Empire, this was surface designed for horse racing and chariot racing, but there was another alternative, which was the real purpose. Some of these niches housed wild beasts, lions, etc. And while gladiators fought those to the thrill of thousands around in these stands, the real purpose was to take Jews and Christians. Mm. You can almost envision a family of Christians and the children scurrying and running, screaming, and, and the bloodthirsty crowd responding. And Pastor, there's, a, there's an upswell of emotion in my heart right now. Well, you would, have heard, think, you would have heard the roar of even the lions and the echo oh, yes. of that. Pastor, I can tell you, I can tell you for sure Jesus said, I go to prepare a place, and if I go, I will come again and receive you. Amen. As those families and individuals, those Christians, were being fed to the lions, as the lions were devouring their body, there was another man in this arena wow. who came to get his own. Amen. Faith, by faith, we see eternity in a capsule. We experience right now the everlasting God manifesting himself in his creation. Faith is just seeing it God's way. What a way to go. Dr. Ball, when the children of Israel were coming into this land, God had promised them a land flowing with milk and honey. Yes. And they were over on the, the mountains of modern day Jordan looking into the land. And that's quite barren over there. And, and they saw a lush, beautiful place. And, and how would they know it was flowing with milk and honey? Well, until recently, that really confused archeologists. They didn't really understand that. But here at Tel Rehov, they found an apiary at, in this place. Right here, which was a commercial beekeeping operation. They found what they believed to be hundreds of these clay uh, hives. The bees would come in like we have the hives in modern day. Actually, they have a hive, a modern hive right uh, yes, here. To uh, emphasize yeah. the point. So then the, the bees would not have only been natural, and we know of Samson and other places yes. where the bees and honey come into play, but also commercially, uh, where the honey was flowing. Before they found this, they said it had to be maybe date honey. It's not really honey though, it's syrup, date syrup. That's a compromising And, and all the guides today will still say it's, it's the date honey. But here in Tel Rehov, they find commercial beekeeping operations that are of large scale. This land, a land flowing with milk and honey. We have a literal archeological confirmation of God's word and their observation. So if they don't find something, I say keep digging. Keep, keep digging. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's In Grace on location in Israel. Discover hidden Israel, and we've taken you to some places that very few people get to go. And I hope that one day you can visit Israel for yourself, but I, Glad at least we've been able to give you a taste of this amazing country. Right before I go, 
we wanna make sure that you know for sure that you're on your way to heaven. Did you know that God so loved the world? He created you, he keeps you uh, sustained. He literally holds your atoms together. The Bible says Jesus, the Son of God, is the creator and the sustainer of life. So he's already doing that for you, but he also wants to give you eternal life. See, we've sinned and we've been separated from a perfect and holy God. Jesus, the Son of God, was perfect. He entered into humanity here in Israel. He died on a cross for your sins and for mine, and he rose again the third day. And all we must do is believe, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that's Jesus, and whosoever believeth in him, that's to trust in him, not in religion and not in a pastor or a priest, but in a person, Jesus, trusting in him to that he paid all of your sins on the cross and accepting that free gift by the authority of the word of God, you will for sure go to heaven when you die. That's the greatest news we can ever share with you and I hope that you've put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. For the first time, skip the airports, baggage and travel time, and discover the secrets of the land flowing with milk and honey, all from the comfort of your own home. See where ancient scribes hid the precious Dead Sea Scrolls. Experience the desert fortress where a small sect of Jews made their last stand. Discover the secrets of the garden tomb and more with In Grace's series, Discover Hidden Israel. For your gift, we will send you four one-hour episodes as Jim Scudder Jr. and Dr. Carl Baugh travel the land promised to Abraham over 4,000 years ago. If your gift is $35 or more, we will also include a special virtual tour. Support In Grace today to receive this special offer. Just call 800-78-GRACE or visit ingrace.tv for more information. Tune in next week for a special edition of In Grace, on location in Israel. What they found matches precisely what the Masoretic scribes verified, adding vowel points, meaning we have the accurate scripture. You definitely want to set your DVR and record every single In Grace episode. Don't miss one of them. You will be so blessed as we learn all about God's world and God's Word. In Grace is a viewer-supported ministry. Thank you for your prayers and gifts.